Hey, everybody, welcome to episode number 42 of the Debt-Free Dad podcast. So if you want to improve your financial life, it's absolutely necessary that you improve your habits. But what habits should you focus on? Which ones are the ones that you need to improve? Well, today we're going to talk about nine habits that will drastically improve your finances just as much as they have improved our finances. And it's also helped thousands of others improve theirs. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt-Free Dad Podcast, where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress-free life. Now, here's your host, Debt-Free Dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, 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 how's everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson Debt Free Dad. And we are super excited that you are part of today's show. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about habits. And uh, this comes as a very timely topic because we are getting ready to open up our fall Life Without Payments workshop. And if you've been listening to our podcast here this year, you've probably have heard us talk about these workshops where this is actually going to be our fourth workshop of uh, 2020 to wrap up the year. And uh, these workshops have been instrumental in helping thousands of people get on the road to a much better financial life and a stress-free financial life. And we're going to talk more about how you can be a part of that workshop here coming up after we talk about today's topic. Uh, but we want to make sure that we mention that to you because there are habits that go along with a lot of the things that we talk about on this show. And a lot of people tend to make the mistake, and I know I used to make the mistake, that I just didn't have the financial know-how to be successful when it came to money. But you actually really do. It's it's not really financial knowledge that you need. It really kind of comes down to more of your habits and the choices that you're making. And if you can change those... Yeah. Are there some other things that you got to learn about? Maybe money, interest rates, personal finance, you know, how to save, what to invest in, things like that. Yeah, sure. There are, but 80 to 90% of it is controlled by you and just making day-to-day choices and making different and better choices. So we want to focus on these nine key habits. And and what would you guys say, uh, Amber, I mean, you've, man, it's four years now. It's crazy. You think about that four years since you joined Roots and uh, how do you think habits have played a big role in, in getting to where you guys are today? You think? Oh my gosh, they have helped immensely just by, and and it's not like these huge, big steps. It's little tiny things like checking my budget every day or checking my bank account all the time. And it just kind of helped us stay on track and stay focused on the goals that we were setting. And now we just got to set new goals. So oh, we're going to talk about goals. This is like I, the first I, habit. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> but did you set goals four years ago, before four years ago, where, I mean, how big were you on goals? At least when it came to your finances, you've always owned your own business. So I'm sure you yeah, set so I goals. Set, I, yeah. We set a lot of goals for like my business and stuff like that. But personally, no, nah, we didn't set too, too much. I don't know why. I don't know. And do you think you'd relate that to being poor with your personal finances? Probably <laughs> nothing. No, but nothing ever seemed, you know, you think about, Oh, maybe someday I'll do this thing, or maybe someday I'll buy, I'll own a home, or maybe someday I'll go on this trip. And then you just never think it's possible because you don't have your finances in check. So it's just not going to happen if wait, you don't have a plan. Wait, someday never came, did it? N- not until I started planning <laughs> for it and making goals. <laughs> uh, right. What would you, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, for us, habits have been, um, it was difficult to learn new habits. I think that's been, that was kind of the thing we learned over the years is um, it's painful because the habits that you've learned to that point are not necessarily the right habits. So to unlearn everything you've been taught and to start trying to do these new things that now are pretty like, well, yeah, I shouldn't buy it unless I have cash. Like that thought process of just paying for things with debt and borrowing money was so like ingrained in me that to think of it in another way and to develop a habit of thinking differently was very difficult. But now, I mean, that's how we think about everything. So um, we're like polar opposite, you know, everything we buy, we're thinking through like, you know, all these different things before we actually make the purchase. Yeah, absolutely. So the first one we're going to tell you guys, if we haven't let the cat out of the bag is it's goal setting. Uh, you've got to get better at goal setting when it comes to your finances. Um, Why are you doing what you're doing? 
is really the question that you need to ask yourself. Where, where are you going? What, what do you, what kind of life do you want to live? Uh, and starting to develop how you can start creating tangible goals that are going to help you reach some of those bigger goals that you have in your life. Like, you know, if for an example, you know, on this podcast, one of the biggest goals that we give new people who are here, if you've been listening to this is, Hey, you got, you should be starting out with an emergency fund. Let's, let's get a savings account built, you know, or let's get your budget built. Let's, uh, let's understand where your money's going, you know, and just all of these little, it doesn't have to be these big monstrous goals. It just needs to be these smaller little goals. What are some small goals, small steps that you can take to help you improve your finances uh, today? And uh, it's all those small little steps that add up to the big, big wins over time. But if you don't have any financial goals, I mean, there's a really good chance. And, and guys, I don't know what you feel about this, but I seriously, I don't, without goals, I, I don't think there's any way that you can get out of the paycheck to paycheck life. I, I just, I just don't see that. Even if you were making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and yet you were still spending all of that money, you're still living paycheck to paycheck. It could be a big paycheck, but you're still living paycheck to paycheck, right? I just think w- without goal setting, you're going to struggle. There's just no question. I think this was, this was one for us. We skipped over a lot. Um, cause we, you know, you want to get right to the business of paying off debt or saving money, or you want to you, but for us, you know, it was always these big ideas of someday we're going to retire or someday I want to go on a nice vacation. And it was these very general, you know, big ideas, but it's very easy to like get caught up in wanting to have debt when you don't have that future, when your future is not defined, you know, if you can get very specific about, okay, you want to retire where and when, and where do you want to live and, and what do you want your lifestyle to be? It starts to become very clear. Then what do I need to, to do today and tomorrow and the next year or the next 10 years to hit that goal? Whereas if it's just like, I want to retire one day, but today I want the truck. So today I'm buying the truck and then I'll worry about retirement later because <laughs> you haven't really defined that. So we got very good on defining like, what does that look like for us? You know, what do we want our kids to do? What do we want them to be? What do we want our lives to be? And once we started doing that, then it was easier to say, no, I don't want the truck now, or no, I don't want the boat or no, I can wait on this, or I don't need that because it's not, um, we're not, it's not playing into what we're trying to accomplish long-term. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Second habit we want to talk about is tracking and budgeting. And man, if you want to come up with some money that you just don't think that you have, start tracking where you're spending your money. Seriously, where, where's your money going? It's amazing to me how many people who are living, I shouldn't even say amazing. It's not. Because I did the same thing. <laughs> it was amazing to me when we started sitting down and going, oh, wow, we do have money. <laughs> like we're just spending yeah, right. it on stuff or food. <laughs> right. Um, and I'm with you. I'm totally with you. Even to this day, there are still some times where, you know, we'll overlook some expenses or some things that we are spending money on. It's like, whoa, whoa, wait, we got to slow down here a little bit. We're spending too much money. It's not in the budget, right? And um, tracking is just the key. Tracking for everything. If you think about some of these you know, think about some of these professional athletes or these people that are just, you know, super, super successful. If you, if you ask them some of their key habits, I bet you, I guarantee you one of them is tracking, tracking how much they're practicing, tracking, you know, what their routine is and just how much water they're drinking and what food they're eating. It's just like, it's like they've got it down to a T because they want to be at their absolute best. And it's the same thing when it comes to your money, uh, is that you've, you've just got to get better at really looking at your day-to-day spending. What are you sending your money towards? What's coming out of that bank account? And then kind of going back to those goals and then asking yourself the question is, is our spending really helping us get to where we want to go? And in a lot of cases, for a lot of us who are living paycheck to paycheck, it's not even close. You're spending money on things that just really aren't all that important to you. You're just kind of doing it because you don't really have a plan. So tracking and budgeting for sure. The other one too, and guys, this was a hard one for me, but patience and being able to save. This is probably by far the habit that I had the hardest time with was being able to save. And I want to share a little bit of a story. I, I, I just turned 41 back in early September and uh, my wife <laughs> gave me this really cool gift and she knows I'm not like a really big fan of, of like stuff. Like she usually asks me what I want. I'm like, I don't, I don't want anything. It's like, I've got everything I need. More stuff just means more stuff to worry about and stress about or learn how to use. And it's like, I, I've got everything I need. But so this birthday, she gives me a card and inside the card had $1,500 in cash with, uh, in it. I was like, holy crap. I was like, what is this for? She's like, I want you to take this and you buy something that's for you. She's like, you're always buying stuff for the kids or we're always doing stuff for the family. But she's like, you rarely ever take time 
uh, for, for you. And, and you want to know what? Crazy enough, after all these years, it's been 10 years since I started this, do you guys know the first thing I thought that I wanted to do with that money? <laughs> Save it. That? Save it. <laughs> Save it. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was, she's like, you know, you can go get that. Remember that drone story I was telling you guys I back was just about? Ask Remember you, that? Did you go buy yeah. the drone? Yeah. That was one of the first things that she said. She's like, go get the drone. You can buy it. You know, you really want it. And I'm like, you know what? I just don't know if it's worth anything. I just don't know if it's worth the price anymore. And I said, I, I almost would much rather just put it in the bank. And, you know, I don't know what I want to use it for. But back in the day, before I did all this, Man, that money would have been gone in a week without a blink of an eye, right? So, I mean, over the years, I have definitely have gotten better at patience and being able to save. But it's taken time. You know, it started with that small emergency fund, and it started with sinking funds. And and now I'm really, really good at it. I'm, I like to get better still, but I'm still much better than where I started 10 years ago. So it's, it's building blocks, one step at a time. I remember how much it hurt to put money in say not spend it like I, to save it. I was like, why? I don't understand why I'm just made that money. Why can't I just go spend it now? I'm shocked at how much I can throw in a bank account from our paychecks every single uh, month. I'm just shocked. It, it still shocks me. And I'm amazed at how much we can actually stash away and we don't even feel it. Yeah. Patience is, um, it, it's hard because it's, I mean, and it, again, for not, for, I don't, you know, it's different for everybody, but our, our road to getting out of debt was a very long road. And there were, there were times where it was, you know, a couple steps back and a couple, you know, and a step forward, you know, because patience, it wears on you. And so I think it is something you have to learn um, as with anything, you know, I mean, if it, depending on your situation, it took us 15 plus years to get into the mess we made. And we weren't, you know, I think the initial feeling is like, we want to be done and out of it next year. Well, that's not going to happen, you know, unless you got a really big shovel, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, unless you, unless you make a ton of money and you could really do something. But for most people, it is going to, it is going to be a long road. And so patience is definitely needed to kind of weather the storm. Yeah, you got it. And that, that kind of goes all the way back to the number one habit we talked about, which is goal setting and having a good reason or why or you know, you've got to have some skin in the game. Why are you going to put all the work in? Because Ryan's exactly right. It's going It's going to take you a long time, not just to save, but just to get out of debt. There's no question. Other habit we want to talk about, and is this the, uh, I don't have these marked today. This is fourth. This is number four. So for those of you who are writing these down, number four, sacrifice and be able to delay gratification. This, this is another big one. This kind of, kind of relates to that $1,500 in cash that my wife just gave me. It's, it's, you know, it took a while to change that habit. Again, delayed gratification. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, the opportunity cost of that money. One, I know that my wife worked hard to save that money and work for that money. But the opportunity cost is, well, if I blow this today, that means I don't have $1,500 in the future. And something may come up and it's going to be like, I'm really glad I had that $1,500 because having money in the bank, having a savings account, it gives you freedom of choice in the future. But if you're spending that money all right away, you, you lose those choices. So uh, being able to sacrifice, being able to not have the best of the best. Uh, I drive a 2002 Chevy Silverado. My wife drives a 2005 Ford Explorer. And, and people ask, well, why do you drive those cars? Well, it's not because we want to, because sure, I would love a brand new truck or a brand new SUV for my wife. But at the end of the day, it's the sacrifice of driving those vehicles that allows us to do a lot of other things. And that's why we decide to make those choices and do those things. Same thing with where we're living. We still currently rent. We're saving up for a sizable down payment for a, a home purchase. And the home that we're renting, it's not in the most convenient and greatest of areas. It's a pretty small house. It's 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 just not ideal, but the rent is ideal because it's cheap, right? So what does that do? It gives us an opportunity to put more money in the bank and gives us, again, in the future, freedom of choice. So you've got to get comfortable with getting uncomfortable, and, and feeling a little bit of that pain of not having the best of the best. This, this is difficult. This is a difficult area to be in. Um, I know for us, we really struggled with this early on because, you know, we lived in a nice neighborhood surrounded by people who had lots of stuff. And so um, the natural inclination was to not want to um, delay gratification or sacrifice because we had to have what everyone else had, you know? So it wasn't until we kind of got out, got ourselves out of that, that we, um, and moved down, you know, moved down in a house and, you know, our house is fine. It's nothing special, but 
it works for us and for all the same reasons you did. I mean, it helped us hit our goals, but um, it really did help us learn to how to delay gratification. And I also think delaying gratification starts to, at least for us, it's really started to help us figure out what are the things we really want, you know, because I think sometimes when you you react to that gratification, what you think you want, you really don't. And you find out a couple months later that you it's not really making you happy. Um, so if you delay gratification, you learn like, Hey, I guess I don't really need that new TV. You know, um, if you want it two or three months later, maybe you still buy it. But for mo- for us, it, we've learned that we, we buy a lot less stuff because we just wait and think about it and like, yeah, I guess I don't need that. And I think sacrifice too, though, doesn't always have to be like stuff or a car or something like that. It is for, I know for us, it was socialization. <laughs> Sometimes we would just be like, Hmm. We really didn't plan to go out this weekend. So that hundred dollars that we would spend for dinner and a movie that our friends are now inviting us to, we're just going to have to say no and sacrifice right now um, for another time, because we had this goal in mind of having this big down payment for our house and, and just getting out of debt as fast as we could to make that happen. So we sacrificed some of those social times with friends and family even. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It isn't, uh, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's not always the big purchases. And a lot of times it is the smaller decisions. It is the $25 here, or the $50 there, or the hundred bucks there. It's it's the death by a thousand cuts, right? Um, great, great point. The fifth one is uh, discipline and consistency. <laughs> and this one I think is probably the hardest one, I think for for all of us as as humans. It's, it's you know, being disciplined and consistent in the pursuit of your goals. It's so easy to fall off the wagon. There are so many distractions everywhere. And that's that's one of the reasons why we put out a, a weekly podcast. It's one of the reasons why our Roots membership and how we've built our program, the accountability and support, it's the reason why we do it yearly. It's a yearly membership. We meet weekly. These are all reasons why we do these things because discipline and consistency is difficult. It's, it's one thing to know everything that you have to do, but if you're not doing it day in and day out, week in and week out, or year in, year out, right? One year you got it, the next year you don't. Like It's, it's going to be really hard to gain traction. So the majority of the time, you've got to be disciplined to these habits and you got to be consistent with them. Having that accountability system is, is huge. Even if it's just an accountability buddy. Um, even Like for me, it was my husband. We just kind of t- checked in with each other. But it could be a friend that maybe wants to go along with you on this on this journey to financial freedom. Yeah, for us, I, I think this is one of the big downfalls we made. You know, we kind of we kind of did the 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 loan road to getting out of debt. You know, and it took us a long time to get there. You know, probably close to you know all said and done, probably close to eight years from the time we started. And I think, you know, it's in we were embarrassed you know, by the situation, we didn't want people to know. So we kind of just felt like alone. And, you know, we did probably towards the end, we had some friends that we found out were kind of on the same path. So it felt like, oh, we have someone to talk to about this. So I definitely do think that having an accountability system, something like Roots, getting, getting around people who are in the same situation that you can talk about this stuff about and not feel ashamed. And like, you're the only one that's done this. Trust me, almost eight out of 10 people are in your same boat. And when you get around other people that are in the same feeling, it's like, it, it's a freedom of like, okay, I can do this. I, you know, I'm not crazy or I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I'm not, I haven't done this and everyone else is doing great. You know, all those people that are doing those trips and the cars and the houses, they're all in debt like me. And it's not just me. That's the problem. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and, the the next habit is don't follow the crowd. And this this kind of is the hard part about that discipline and consistency because what Ryan said, you know, that was one of the hardest parts that we had too. This is why our business exists is because I knew it didn't have to be this hard. And one of the reasons why it was because we did it by ourselves and we had hardly any support. We had most people kind of made fun of us for it. And uh, it, it was that was shocking to me. I didn't really quite understand that. Here you are, you're trying to improve your life, trying to improve your finances, get out of debt. Um, get yourself into a better place. And most people kind of just look at you like you're nuts. Like, what do you mean you're not going to live without a credit card? Or what do you mean you're not going to have car payments? Or like, that doesn't make any sense. It just wasn't clicking. So it it did take a while. But when it comes to not following the crowd, you got to understand that the majority of people out there are broke. I mean, if you look at statistics, we share 
These two, very frequently on this show, we don't have to go into a lot of them, but just know this one, 78%, almost 8 out of 10 people are living paycheck to paycheck. That means that if that next paycheck doesn't hit for almost 8 out of 10 households in this country, things get scary very, very quickly for those people. And yeah, they live in really nice houses and have really nice cars and really nice lawns and nice landscaping, and not all of them, but some of them do. So you can't always just go by looks and what's happening on Facebook and social media and what they're talking about. Um, another one, Go Banking Rate Survey, they found that back in November of 2019, so just almost a year ago, as we were kind of going into the whole coronavirus situation, 69%, almost 7 out of 10 people, had less than $1,000 in a bank account. Almost 7 out of 10. So you really got to be careful about not following friends and family and I mean unless you've definitely vetted them like you know they're doing well because in a lot of cases they're just not doing that great so you got to be able to find your education your support from an outside source that knows what they're talking about and knows what they're doing next habit is a good one I love this one is uh, gratitude and uh, I think in a country that we live in the societies that we live in we're all about hyper consumerism right it's it's always about the next best thing uh, in fact if you if you buy a smartphone, and I'm not going to say any manufacturers here, but you know if you buy a smartphone, all of a sudden the new smartphone comes out, and and it's amazing how much the marketing can make you feel guilty for what your current phone doesn't or does do, right? And and here you are now thinking, oh, I got to have this latest and greatest, or the marketing makes it look like the people who own those phones are the hip and trendy ones, right? They're they're the ones who've got it, and you've got to. This took me a long time to do too. Is like you've got to be grateful for what you already have. And sometimes that could be just as easy as spending time each day and just thinking about, hey, I'm grateful for this, or I'm grateful for this, or I'm grateful for this. Um, and, and really just sitting still and being grateful for what you have instead of always focusing on what you don't have. Because if you're always focusing on what you don't have, you're never going to be freaking happy. You're never going to be satisfied because they're always going to be coming out with something new that you're just going to have to have to have. So gratitude has got to be a part of your financial plan. It's so easy to take for granted too um, what you have while you're seeing flashes of highlight reels of friends, family, even acquaintances or people you haven't talked to in years on your social media. It's really easy to go, oh, I wish I had that when you have the equivalent or more sitting all around you. Yeah, this is an, I mean, for us, this has been a, a big habit to consistently, um, you know, kind of drive home. You know, we moved from a big house down to this house and I'm completely, I've, we've learned, I think that's the, one of the biggest things we've learned through this whole process is gratitude and contentment is not getting out of that rat race and the mindset of everybody trying to tell me what I need. It's for, you know, if I finally learned in my life after almost 46 years of what I really need and want in my life, you know, um, I've spent 40, over 45 years of chasing it, of everyone telling me what I should have. And now I, I just, I know what it means to me and I'm thankful for the things I have. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Ryan, you said earlier, you know, it's just, you almost feel better having less stuff. And I totally, totally agree with that. Like I just, the less stuff I can have, the, the better off I think I am. It's just, it, it doesn't stress you out as much. It's just, it's just so much better just on the gratitude side. So focus on those things. Next habit we want to talk about too is uh, just commit to not using debt. I mean, that that's a, it's a very simple habit. Like it's just like, that's a simple rule, I should say. Not a simple habit. Simple rule. No, hard, that's not that's not simple at all. Brian. Hard habit to follow, right? <laughs> hard hard rule to follow for sure. But seriously, just commit to not using debt any longer. That's it. I mean, just it doesn't get any more complicated than that. Is it hard to follow because of what society is doing, because of what we're hearing about marketing, and because everything out there is marketing with financing and payments? Yeah, it's absolutely hard to go the other direction. But it's not impossible. I mean. I do it. Ryan does it. Amber does it. I mean, I've met hundreds and thousands of other people who do it. It's just we're the minority when it comes to this idea. But you just have to commit to not using debt any longer, at least for a period of time. If you're listening to this podcast and uh, I, I just ask you to do it for the first 30 days, just say, hey, look, we're, we're just not going to go any further into credit card debt. We're, we're not going to buy anything with financing. We're just we're going to see how we can do with one month of just not using debt. and. If you can do it one month, you can do it two months. If you can do it two months, you can move on to three months. And slowly but surely, by practicing some of these habits, you'll, you'll prove to yourself over time that you don't necessarily have to have 
credit cards for emergencies. You don't necessarily have to have a car payment to get a reliable car. There, there are other options that are out there. Yeah, and I think, I think this one here, when you say commit to not using debt, and this goes back to learning the habits of discipline, learning the habits of sacrifice and delaying your gratification. That's how you can really commit yourself to getting out of debt. Um, you know, cause, cause it's for us, it was always like, we're going to get out of debt, but then it, it's those other habits that we didn't have that creep in that. But so if you really, you know, just like Brad's, I, I think it's important. Like you said, 30, 30 days, like don't take it as this, Hey, we're going to try to get out of debt this year. Just do it in small increments. Like we are just, a lot of people have these no spend months, no spend January or whatever you want to call it. Just do that for a month and see if you can do it. Yeah, I think that's one of the mistakes that I made uh, early on is is trying to wrap my head around actually reaching a life without payments, actually reaching financial freedom. And early on in, my, in the in the game for me, or at least in the journey, it was it was just hard to wrap my head around that. And I think that's what probably delayed me the most was buying into that it's actually possible to do it. Well, rather than think long term. Let's just, yeah, like like we said, break it down shorter, 30 days. Just start with that. Just start with small little steps. And as you start implementing these things over time, you'll see that you're going to start to see these little improvements and little improvements turn into big improvements. And that's when you're going to start to buy into this. Hey, this actually could work. We could actually do this and life is getting better, but you have to give it a chance and it just starts with one little small thing. This last one I want to talk about this. I love this. Um, I'm a big Darren Hardy fan. Uh, Darren, if you haven't heard of Darren Hardy, look up Darren Hardy. Uh, he does a, what he calls is a Darren Daily. It's it's a really cool self development video that he does Monday through Friday. It's it's literally like three to five minutes long a day. It's it's very short to the point, and he always gives some really great stuff. And one day he was talking about this idea of having unconscious incompetence, meaning that you don't even know that you're doing anything wrong, and that's what's keeping you really stuck. And if you have grown up to manage your money like most people do in the United States and in Canada, right, and you've grown up to understand that debt is normal, you're going to have a credit card for emergencies, you're always going to have a car payment, the credit score is the ultimate thing in your life, and so on and so forth, like, a lot of people just don't even know that what they're doing is wrong because it's all they've ever known. And that's why education and stepping outside your comfort zone and opening your mind to new ideas is so important if you want to win at personal finance. Because as we said about it, if you're if you're going to follow the crowd and and they're incompetent as well, and, and honestly, not it's not by choice. It's just, just matter of fact. It's just how they've been raised. But education is going to help change your mindset. It's going to help change the direction of where you're going and want to do things differently. If you're going to keep doing the same things over and over again, you're never going to get a, a different result. Yeah, the credit industry has, you know, what, probably since the 50s, <laughs> you know, for the past 70 years, it's been the most heavily marketed product in the history of mankind, probably at this point. And so they have done it, you know, if you think about 70 years, I mean, you're talking about a few generations of people now who have been just nothing but indoctrinated with this idea of debt. So I think this is important to realize because I think this is where that shame comes in and that, that feeling of like, I, sh you know, I'm embarrassed and all that, you know, but reality is this is what we've been taught. I mean, I think we've had examples on this podcast. We've had examples with our kids in school, the books they read. It's the, the Barbie that has the credit card. I mean, just it, there's so much, so there's so many things out there that we're bombarded with that credit is normal and okay that it's, you shouldn't be embarrassed that you don't know because I didn't know. I remember when Brad, who's my brother said he was getting out of debt and I thought he was crazy. <laughs> and I just was like, what are you doing? Cause it was just, it's just not, it's not what you do. You, you borrow money for everything. That's how you live your life. Um, at least here in America for sure. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's important to be open to a different mindset and to be educated on it and look at it from a completely different point of view. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I was going to say the same thing and just don't, don't beat yourself up. It's okay to, to look for some different answers. <laughs> And I think we have some of those answers coming up in our Live Without Payments workshop. And 
And guys, this is what we've wrapped our business around are, are these nine key habits and, and helping you uh, get to be, you know, have these habits be a part of your day to day life. And that's why we're opening up our free Life Without Payments Fall Workshop. And this live workshop is going to help you reduce a lot of financial stress. It's going to provide you with a lot of the first steps. And a lot of those you've heard here, but we're going to reiterate those first steps, the things that you should really be focusing on. And it's also going to give you a clear direction on how to get on the road to a stress-free financial life. I think one of the biggest things that a lot of us struggle with is is just where to get started. What what do I need to focus on? And, and I think that confusion and that frustration, and like we've talked about, sometimes that emotion can kind of keep us stuck. And and what happens is over time is we delay it, we delay it, we procrastinate, and nothing ever changes. And the point of this workshop is really to show you exactly the steps that you need to be focused on. We're going to show you in what order you need to focus them on. So that way, when you leave the workshop, you know exactly what you should be concentrating on. And uh, you can start implementing these uh, these nine key habits that we talked about here today. And uh, before you discount and say that, you know, what we do here and, and what we share with people only works with certain people, uh, you're kind of dead wrong. This is helping people in all walks of life. And I don't care where you come from. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how much debt you have. I don't care what your income level is. If you put this information to work in your life, your finances will improve. And if you skip out, you're really kind of only hurting yourself. So if you've been listening to our podcast for a while and, and a lot of these ideas and things that we have been talking about have been intriguing to you, this live workshop is for you. We've got live dates. And again, these are live workshops. You're going to be live with me. Amber joins us on these workshops. We're going to be coming up on October 18th, 19th, and 20th. All right. You can join the workshop at the real debtfreedad.com forward slash workshop. We're going to include that link in the actual episode of the show notes. But again, that's the real debtfreedad.com forward slash workshop. And I look forward to seeing you in that fall workshop here coming up real, real soon. Hey, hey, what's this I see? I thought this was a party. Let's do All right, all right. That sound means it's time for the celebrations of the show. And I am very excited to kick it off with this celebration. Chandra Harper, again, joined us in the free workshop we just got done talking about and decided to take that extra step to say, you know what, I'm going to join Roots. And several years later, after implementing these nine key habits that we've talked about on this show, check this out. We paid another $1,100 on our mortgage, bringing our balance down, guys, listen to this, to $1,620.15. That means that she is a little over $1,600 away from having a paid-for freaking house. I love that. The stuff works. It just works. Goosebumps right here. Yeah. Yeah. Goosebumps. (laughs) It's awesome. So congratulations to Chandra. Uh, Lacey Love did not order food all week. And added $250 to her emergency fund, stuck to waiting 24 hours for items over $50, which stopped all of the impulse purchases. Awesome. Great job, Lacey. Uh, Judy McCord, celebrating my birthday with food made at home instead of eating out and saved us almost $100. That is impressive, Judy. And by the way, I want to give our family a little celebration. So today marks 175 straight days of not eating out. Oh my gosh, how do you do it? 175. Now I do have to say there is a little bit of an asterisk because I did go on a fishing trip and I had to eat out twice. However, we're calling it a streak because my wife did not stop eating out. So (laughs) we're connected. We're connected. So it still counts. So again, don't make up stupid little rules for your goals, right? It's 175 days. Uh, but even before that happened, it was like 130 some days, man. That's it's it's been awesome. It's been a huge wow. money saver. Uh, but uh, we're gonna have a whole podcast coming up on that whole journey because it's it's been interesting. But just had to share that. Katrina McDougall received confirmation that my car is officially paid off. Congratulations to you. That is awesome. Sammy Shopper saved $400 for Christmas and paid another $400 this week's towards loans. Christmas budget is full. Now it's time to shop. There you go, Sammy. Yep. Talking about those sinking funds. And Sammy joined us on our podcast a couple of months ago. Uh, She is still continuing to make fantastic progress. So congratulations to all of you who are working so hard at reaching financial freedom. And again, if you want these kinds of results, be sure to join us 
and our upcoming Life Without Payments Fall workshop. And that, again, you can sign up at therealdebtfreedad.com forward slash workshop. And thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback, and it also helps us grow our podcast. So please leave us an honest review in the podcast section of the player you're listening to this in. We read every single one of those. And as you know, the Debt Free Dad podcast is here to help you live a happier and stress-free financial life. So if you know someone who could benefit from our show, please give us a share. We appreciate you, and we will see you guys on an upcoming episode. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Debt Free Dad podcast. For more free resources to kick debt and financial stress, head over to therealdebtfreedad.com.